All right, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. Whoop, whoop. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. All right, so warm up number 34 is on the screen, and it should read uh, for number one write the compound inequality shown by the graph, and they give us a number line. One graph is in red, and it's starting between negative five and negative four with a solid point and it highlights red all the way to the right with arrow at the end. A second graph is an open point at negative two, and that's going to the left in green with arrow at the end. Number two, it says solve. Four over x squared minus four equals one over x minus two. Number three, Write the equation of the function, and they give us a coordinate plane from negative 10 to 10 on x, negative 10 to 10 on y, and there's a graph uh, graphed on that coordinate plane. Uh, reference points I'm going to give you are negative 3, negative 4. Okay, negative 3, negative 4, and 3, negative 6 negative three, negative four, and three, negative six. So use those two points and then graph your line and go ahead and write the, it says write the equation of the function. All right, I'll give you guys some time, ready, go. All right, here we go. For number one, uh, it looks like the two graphs are intersecting so my dividing points for those graphs, for the red one, I said it started at between negative four and negative five. So I'm gonna say it's negative 4.5. It's a solid point, so it's less than or equal to X. The other dividing point is at negative two. It's not a solid point, it's an open point. And I'm just gonna do a less than. So my Compound inequality should read solution set of x such that negative 4.5 less than or equal to x less than or less than negative 2. In interval notation, it would be bracket negative 4.5 comma negative 2 parentheses. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. Number two. For number two, let me make some space here. Uh, it's a rational equation, and I'm going to check to see if it's proportion. Do we have a fraction equal to another fraction? Yes, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to do 4 times x minus 2. If I distribute that, I get 4x minus 8 equals. Then x squared minus 4 times 1, and that's x squared minus 4. So I'm, now I don't have a rational equation. I have a quadratic equation, which means now it needs to be equal to 0. I'm going to get everything to one side. I already have the x squared on the right side, so I'm going to get 4x minus 8 to the other side. So I subtract 4x and add, whoa, what was that? Okay, let me try that again. I negative, negative 4x and I add 8 to both sides. Uh, negative 4x plus 8. And I have 0 equals x squared minus 4x, and 8 minus 4 is positive 4. From there, we need to solve. Well, first we need to factor, see if we can factor. This is 4, our product, and our sum is negative 4. So what factors of 4, let's see, 1 times 4, 2 times 2, add up or subtract to give us negative 4? Do any of those add or subtract to give us negative 4? Nope, so that means this one has no solution, which means we don't need to worry about excluded values at this time. And last but not least, number three, we start off with y equals mx plus b. We write it in function notation, f of x equals blank x. So we know that the plus b is our y-intercept, or where does this line cross the y-axis? It crosses that negative 5. It's right there. 
And all I need is one more point uh, to find my slope, because that's the last thing I need, M, slope. So I already have the y-intercept. I'm going to go to the next reference point, which is 3, negative 6, which is right there. So if I go from left to right, it looks like this is going to go down one step and 3 to the right. One step down, 3 to the right. So that means it's negative 1 over 3. And that's my function. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. All right. All right, let's move on. So our agenda for today, we covered uh, warm up number 34. We're still transforming functions. And today for home play, I'm only giving you one problem. Let's go. Thank you, Mr. Q. You're welcome. Once again, warm up number 34, transforming functions. And today's home play is only one problem, one problem only. All right. Uh, today, I'm not going to give you an asynchronous code because it's a continuation of the lesson, the prior lesson. If you want to see the, the rest of the uh, presentation, once again, just go to the previous uh, synchronous code and you can follow along with that. All right, your previous home play, though, was uh, transforming uh, the graph of f of x equals 2x plus 1 using the domain negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 and graphing also f of x, x squared using the domain negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. They give you two transformations for each. And then from there, page 41, numbers 1 through 4. So I want you to go to Canvas. I don't want to see page 41. What I do want to see is these two. You worked on these two by yourself. Take a picture, submit. Uh, go ahead and submit those in uh, Canvas, please. Do that right now. And as you're doing that, I'm going to leave on the screen the home play for tonight. It's only one problem. And it reads, do the indicate transformations to the following functions. It's only one. It says a graph f of x equals x squared using the domain negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And, the tr and then it says transform and graph. So we're asking you to do two things. Transform, which means uh, I want to see the uh, table. And then the graph. So the first transformation in green, it reads f of x plus 3. The second transformation is f of x minus 5. That's in red. The next transformation is f, open parentheses, x minus 4, close parentheses. That's in blue. And then the last transformation, which is in black, is f, open parentheses, x plus 3, close parentheses. Sure, you copy that. All right. So let's move on. Our objective for today: I can transform fun a function using different parameters. I can transform a function using different parameters. So we know what the concept is for today, or the main idea, which is functions. And we know what transform means, which means changing into something new. Parameters, we already covered that definition also. So we know what functions are. We don't need to fill one of these up. You already have it or should have it on your notes. Parameters, we said, is a number that transforms a function into another function. From there, we moved on to this. And we said we started with two variable equations. We moved on to function notation, which is f of x. From there, we did a transformation here side by side. And then we moved on to uh, making one of them complete. We started with graphing the original one, f of x. From there, we moved on to f of x plus 5 to the original function. And then at the end, f of x minus 2. And what did we conclude? We concluded that from the original, f of x equals 3x minus 1, that one moved five steps up in green and then two steps down in red. From there, I gave you guys to do one by yourself, and I said example mega q, graph f of x, the graph f of x shown, 
and the reference points were negative one, negative two, one, two, three, negative two, and five, two. And we connected uh, from left to right those points, and it looked like a letter N. And then they asked you to do in green a transformation, which was g of x equals fx plus four. And in red, it said then graph in red, g of x equals fx minus four. So we, according to what we saw, we said that the green one, since it has the plus four outside of the parentheses there, it means that we're gonna move all of these points, all the four points of that function up four steps. And the one in red, since the negative four is outside of the parentheses, uh, we said we were gonna move that four steps down, okay? From there, we said a general way of thinking about it or a rule would be g of x equals fx plus k. And we said, since the k is outside of the parentheses, it's known as a parameter because I can replace it with any number. And we said that the k always goes either up or down or moves all the points up or all the points down. From there, we moved on to example super q, which was graph f of x equals x squared using the domain negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And we were given a table for the original graph, a green one for the first transformation, and a red one for the last transformation. So let me do that one more time just to make sure I recap this. So we said, and I said, the transformation now has a square on the function. That means any x value I'm going to square. So I'm gonna write the square over here so like that I know what I'm doing to each x value. So if I take negative two and I square it, that means negative two times negative two, that's positive four. Next, negative one squared is negative one times negative one is one, zero, one, and four. I'm gonna plot those, negative two, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, four. We graph that parabola. It looks something like this. There it is. From there, we did the same thing with uh, the green one. I wrote my little two here, my exponent of two, so I know what I'm doing uh, as a function. But the difference here is that, look up really quick to see if you remember. Now this one, doesn't have a number outside of the f of x. Notice this one has f of x, this one has f of x minus five inside of the parentheses. So for this one was a little bit different and we said, I'm gonna substitute now, instead of f of x, I'm gonna substitute the x values in here. So I did negative two inside of the parentheses minus five squared. That means negative two and negative five, that's negative seven negative seven uh, times negative seven, which is squared, that's 49. From there, we went to negative one inside of the parentheses, minus five squared, that's negative six times negative six, which is 36 squared. So this is zero minus five squared, which is negative five times negative five. That means it's 25. And then from there, we did one minus five squared, which is negative four squared, which is 16. Then two minus five squared, that was negative three squared, which is nine. From there, three minus five is negative two. Negative two squared is four. From there, we got four minus five squared. And that is negative one, negative one squared is one. And then five minus five squared, which is zero, so that's zero. And I said, we can't graph the y value 49, 36, 25, or 16, but we can graph these. So I said, let me graph those. So I started with two, nine, two, nine. From there, I went to three, four, three, four. From there, I went to four, one, four, one. Then I went to five, zero, five, zero. From there, I sketched that part of the graph and it looks like this. And then we said, well, Mr. Q, it looks like the original one starts over here 
And then now the transformation is over here. And we said, if somebody walked in, what did we say? That all these three points moved five steps right or in a positive direction because all the positive numbers are over here. And let's see if it worked. This one, five steps, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, there it is. This one, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, this one, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. And with that same idea, I can do the same to these two points, which means one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And now I can complete my transformation. There it is. You can see that it moved. But what also did we see? Did we observe that over here where they give the table, it has F parentheses X minus five, close parentheses. We notice that this number is inside of the parentheses. That's the first observation. The second observation is that what is the opposite of negative five? The opposite of negative five, opposite is positive five. That's why we took five steps in the positive direction, which is to the right. So I said with that same idea, without filling in the table for the red one down here, I have F parentheses X plus four close parentheses. So if, if the other one was negative five and we went to the right, this is positive four, what is it gonna do? It's gonna go four steps to the left. Four steps left. Or in a negative direction. Why? What is the opposite of positive four? Opposite of positive four, negative four. So that means I go each of these points, I go one, two, three, four, 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 and there it is. Pretty good, yes. Is it coming back? Yes, Mr. Q, yeah, we did this. I'm just recapping it just to make sure we got it, okay? So now that we have the general idea on your coordinate plane, on the blank one, copy this one. Example, Chazam Q. It says graph of X is shown and plot reference points, negative two, neg I'm sorry, negative one, negative two, two, uh, my goodness, negative one, negative two, one, two, three, negative two, and five, two and then connect the points from left to right. And it's gonna look like an N. And we're gonna do the following transformations. Here we go, but only the graphs. It says graph in green, G of X equals F of parentheses X minus two. And in red, graph in red, G of X equals F of X plus six. And we'll do that together just to make sure we got it. I'm gonna label the original f of x right above it in black. And let's do the transformation in green. So this is my original. This green one, we're gonna transform it, which is telling us to do what? Um, Hayden, what would this one tell us to do to the original if it has G of X equals F of parentheses X minus two. That means the negative two is inside the parentheses. What would I do? You would like subtract it from X or like move it to the right. Move it to the right. Yes, that is correct. We're gonna move it to the right two steps. So each of these points, two steps. So I go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So connect those from left to right. There it is. And I'm gonna label this underneath G of X equals 
f of x minus 2. All right, and that this one, once again, it went to the right two steps, okay? All right, how about the red one? What do we do with the red one, Angie? Move it to the left six times. To the left six times. So I'm gonna take the original one here and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 And I'm gonna label this one G of X equals F of X plus six. And that one went to the left. Now, I wanna bring this to your attention because some of you, your, your brain's gonna get confused from time to time. This is the confusion, look up, be careful with these. When the number is inside of the parentheses, we know that it goes either to the right or to the left. It went to the right when it was a negative two. But Mr. Hugh, but didn't we go to the right to the positive direction? Yes, so that, that's why we need to think of it in regards to if it's a negative two, what is the opposite of negative two? Positive two, that's why we went to the positive direction. Look at the red one. It had inside the parentheses positive six. So what is the opposite of positive six? Negative, so that's why we're going to the left. All right. So just to, uh, to make sure we got this, look up. What if I said this in blue? Graph me g of x equals f of x plus 3. I'm going to give you a, a caution. It's not the same as the other ones. Look at it as the other two. Would you go up three? Yeah, so for this one, we would go up. Yes, thank you, Christopher. Yeah, whenever the number is outside of the parentheses where you have f of x, like this one, the number's outside, that means we go whichever steps in that direction. So this is positive three. So we go up three. We go one, two, three. This one, one, two, three. This one, one, two, three. And one, two, three. Connect them from left to right. And our new function is g of x equals f of x plus three. All right, so right now we showed the two directions going left and right. So that general rule for left and right would be g of x equals fx minus h. And once again, what do we call h, guys, in this transformation? What is it called? Alberto, what do we call H? I mean, right now it's H, but before it was a number, what would we call it? Very good, parameter, parameter. Any number that I give you to move the, or transform the function is a parameter. And what does H tell us to do, Jezio? Isn't that the one where it goes up and down? No, the up and down is when it's outside of the parentheses. To go left or right? Yeah, left or right. That is correct. This one goes left or right. Okay. All right. So now that we got this, I'm going to give you, and, and what I've been doing, guys, I've been giving you only parts of the entire rule of the general transformation rule. It's kind of like this. Uh, let's see. Hands if you're a gamer. Who who's, who does gaming? Some of you? Okay. Uh, or some of you know that, you know, whenever you get to certain places, 
uh, let's say you go to a video game or you go to a certain place or on your phone, you need to press different buttons for different things. So uh, when you have, let's say you, those of you that are gamers, when you have your control, the joystick on the right does something, the joystick on the left does something, A and B on the top of, the, of the, your, your control does, A does something, B does something, so on and so forth. The general rule for transformation has different buttons per, per se, they are known as parameters. So I've only given you for four transformations, there's four more. You're, you're like, what four transformations? Well, we first started with up and down, so that's one up, one down, so that's two. And then we did left and right, so that's four transformations. So let me give you what the general rule looks like now with all the four transformations that we've seen so far. Copy this, please. Here it is. It says, let's generalize the rule. And here's a rule, write the rule down. G of X equals F of, open parentheses, X minus H, close parentheses, plus K. And then copy this table underneath. It says, predict what will happen by completing the table. We're gonna complete it together, just copy the table. We'll do this one together. The first column has, uh, the title at the top, sign for H, and underneath that it has positive, underneath that is positive, underneath that is negative, underneath that is negative. The next column to the right, it reads, that's the title at the top, it reads sign for K. Underneath that it reads positive, and then underneath that negative, underneath that positive, underneath that negative. And the third column to the right, it's a longer column. It should read transform of transformation of the graph of f of x as your title. And the rest underneath there are empty. And we're gonna fill that in together. Copy that, please. All right. So here we go. Uh, on your general rule, for K, circle the letter K and sketch a little arrow to the right to indicate what does K do? Well, I'm gonna put over here on the side an arrow going up or down. The graph will go up if it's a positive and it would go down if it's a negative. Okay, then go to H, put a little box around H and sketch a little arrow going downward like so. And then what does H do? That one goes from side to side or left or right. You draw an arrow with um, going in both directions. We go to the right if it's a positive value and we go to the left if it's a negative value. Okay. All right. So here on the transformation for each row, I'm gonna write the general rule, but without the H and the K. Let's do that together. We're, let's do that in black. G of X equals F parentheses X minus blank close parentheses plus blank. Let's do the same one underneath on the next row. G of X equals F parentheses X minus blank. And then close parentheses plus. G of X equals F of X, open parentheses X minus blank, close parentheses plus. G of X equals underneath that one, F of parentheses X minus close parentheses plus. All right. All right, let's do the top one together, guys. I'm gonna do that in red. Okay. So they're telling us that for H on this one, they want a positive value. 
So I'm going to do this one myself. For H, I'm going to substitute positive 2. Positive 2 is in red. There it is. Okay. So positive 2 in red. So according to what I wrote above, where, which direction is it going to go? It's going to go to the right, Mr. Q. So I'm going to put over here on way at the end. I'm going to go right two. OK. So I'm not done with my general form. Because it says here on the table, it says sine for k is positive. I'm going to circle that positive so I know that I need to substitute a positive value for k. And where's k? It's outside the uh, the uh, it's outside the the parentheses. So I'm going to put a three here, positive three. So according to k, what happens when it's a positive value? It goes up three steps. So I'm going to go up three. So here you need to make sure you put on your thinking cap on and imagine a graph or a function and do the transformation in your noodle as to what's happening to the function given those parameters there. So here they gave us an, a positive two, it went to the right two steps, and positive three, it went up. All right, let's do the next one together. I'm gonna to change to uh, blue. Let's do the next one in blue. They want us to do um, another positive for H. Let's see, give me a positive value for H. Hayden, what would I substitute in here? Five, okay, she said five. So what does that mean, guys, in regards to a transformation? What is it gonna do? Going to the right. Going to the right, so I'm gonna write, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, See what I did there? I'm gonna write, write five, okay. All right, let me go back to the general rule, but here it says K is a negative value. So I'm gonna substitute a negative value here just to save some time. I'm gonna say negative four, negative four. So what would that do to our function, uh, Octavio? Oh, why don't you go down four? Down four, that is correct. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna switch colors to green and I'm gonna go to the third row. And it says here, H is a negative value. So I'm gonna substitute in here for H inside of the parentheses, a negative value. Let me give you the value. I'm gonna say negative, um, let's do negative six, negative six. What is that going to do to our original function? Addy, the negative six, what would it do? Um, you would go to the left? Left, that is correct. Left, six steps. And then it says here, uh, K is a positive value. Uh, I'm gonna give you a positive value here. Let's do uh, one, positive one, outside of the parentheses. What would that do to the original one? Um, Jesus, what would it do? It would go up. It would go up, yeah. Up one. That is correct. All right. Now, really quick, guys, before I move on, look at the uh, the function that we just wrote right now. G of x equals f of x minus, and then it has minus six, close parentheses, plus one. We can't leave this as a negative and a negative. You see what I'm saying? Let's rewrite this. So this one is gonna be written, I'm gonna write it over here because I don't have space. So it writes g of x equals f of parentheses x. And then from there we look at this and that's what is negative times a negative? Because these are two negatives right here. It becomes a positive six, close parentheses, 
plus one. This is what's going to actually look, this is what it's going to actually look to do this transformation, six to the left and up one. All right, let's do the last one. I'm going to do the last one in black. They tell us that H is a negative. H is a negative. So I'm going to give you that negative value. Uh, let's do, 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 do negative, negative three for H. And what is that going to do, um, Anthony? The negative three of H, what is it going to do? It, it's going to move it to the, to the left three. Left three, yes. And then it says here to, uh, on the second column, it says K is negative. So let me do a negative number here. Negative would be, let me do negative uh, seven. So what does that do for our function? Roman. Uh, that would move it uh, down seven. Down seven, thank you. Yes. Now, can we leave it? Once again, look at the parentheses. We have a X minus and then another minus and then three. Can we leave it like that? No, we need to rewrite it. So I'm gonna write it over here. G of X equals F parentheses, X plus three, close parentheses. And then at the end, we have a positive and a negative right there. So it's gonna end up with just negative seven or minus seven. All right. So, by looking at this general rule, hopefully that clears it up as to what each parameter does so far. Once again, we still have four more transformations to go, but I wanna make sure that we got this. Show me with the fingers how comfortable you are with these so far. Five, 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 fives, five, five, fives, four, fives, okay. Well, let's see how you do by yourself. Copy this next function, please, on the coordinate plane. Example, Michael Jordan Q, let's go. And it reads, the graph of the function f of x equals x cubed is shown. And it says, show g of x equals fx plus two, g of x equals fx minus three, g of x equals fx minus six, and g of x equals fx plus n. Let me read that again. In green, g of x equals fx plus two, in red, g of x equals fx minus three. In blue, g of x equals f parentheses x minus six, close parentheses. And in black, g of x equals f open parentheses x plus seven, close parentheses. And the uh, cubic function on the coordinate plane reference points that give us negative two, negative eight, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, to eight, and then you sketch your graph going through those points. It's gonna be like a little squiggly line from left to right. It looks like it's starting from the left on the bottom, goes upward, turns a little bit to the right, and then upward. Copy that, and then we'll get started together to do this part. Oh. All right, so, so far, if you notice, we've introduced linear functions, we've done Quadratic functions, this is a cubic function. It looks kind of funky. It starts on the bottom on the uh, third quadrant. It ends on the first quadrant. So it starts on the bottom left quadrant and it ends up in the top right quadrant. And uh, we're gonna be working with those. So let's do the first transformation. Right now I'm only doing the graph. Here we go. So in green, look at this green one. And it, it reads g of x equals fx plus two. The two is outside of the parentheses. What is it going to do to my original function with this transformation? Alyssa, what would it do to the original function? It's gonna go up. Up, how many steps? Two. Two, that is correct. Each of these points, we move them up two steps. So we go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nice. And I'm going to connect those points. Mm. 
there it is. We're done with this one. It went up. Okay. Let's look at the blue one. The blue one says g of x equals f parentheses x minus 6 close parentheses. Alyssa passed someone. What are we going to do with that blue transformation, guys? What do we do to the original one? Alyssa, pass it to someone. Oh, sorry. Um, Hayden. Hayden, what is the do? What is, what is the blue one going to do to the original function? It's going to move it to the right six. Yeah, to the right six steps. That is correct. So I'm going to take this original points, move them to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 There it is. Thank you. Let's go to the red one. The red one says g of x equals f of x, and then outside the parentheses, we have minus 3. Pass it to someone, Hayden. <clears throat> Anthony? Anthony, what, what's that one going to do to the original? <clears throat> it's going to move it down 3. Down 3. That is correct. Down 3. So three steps, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. And the last one, pass someone, Anthony. The last one reads g of x equals f of parentheses x plus 7. What are we going to do with that one? Anthony, pass it someone. Um, Bianca. Bianca. What is this one going to do to the original? Stays that way. The seven? Yeah. Seven to the what? I'm sorry. It goes, it stays there. No, no, no. Uh, it has a transformation. It's the original one was x cubed. This one we're going to do x plus seven. Yeah. So if x minus six went to the right six steps, what is x plus 7 going to do? It's going to go up 7 steps. Um, that's if the number is outside of the parentheses. This one's going to go to the oh, left, left 7 steps. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven, seven, and seven. There it is. So observations, let's make sure we got this. If we have a, a, if they give us whatever function and a transformation or the parameters outside of the parentheses of the f of x, like this one, f of x plus two, the two was outside the parentheses. But it's either going up or down. But if the number is inside of the parentheses with x, it's going either right or left, yes? So here on the conclusion part, just write, 
uh, it doesn't matter what function given and then we'll write the general rule g of x equals f of parentheses x minus h plus k comma h will always go h will always go what ivan Ivan. Yeah. H will always go what? Always go. Left or right? Left or right? Left or right and k will always go what danny up and down up and down up or down All right, so show me with you, how come you are with those four transformations so far? Yeah, five, 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 okay. All right. So, your synchronous assignment so far, once again, uh, is this problem that's on the screen. It says graph f of x equals x squared using the domain negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. The transformations that you need to do. It says, but notice it says transform and graph. So it has f of x plus three, f of x minus five, f parentheses x minus four, and the f parentheses x plus three. So that means I want a table for each of these transformations, and then I want to see the transformation that we did on the graph. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's the lesson for today. I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, once again, if you need to attend tutoring, though, you need the extra support. See you after lunch. Have a good one. Enjoy. Peace. Bye. Bye, Mr. Q. Have a good day. Bye, you too. Bye, Mr. Q. Have a good day. Bye, you too.